Welcome to another tidbit of Indiana University history that you probably don't know. Uh, I was asked about the history of the IU Police Academy. If you don't know, we have a police academy here on campus. Uh, it is one of the six uh, Indiana law enforcement academies uh, that are spread throughout the state. Uh, we've had it for about 50 years. We just graduated our 50th class uh, out of it. And it's the only program in the country where a full-time student can also be in a law enforcement academy and pursue and get credentialed as a law enforcement officer. So it's got a pretty unique uh, uh, place that it holds in the country, but also has a really interesting history that we're gonna talk about today. So first, let's talk about when law enforcement came to campus, period. Uh, so in January 1925, Walter Pete Peterson, uh, Pete was his nickname, uh, was hired as our first law enforcement officer on campus, and he worked for the Dean of Men. This is before we had a Dean of Students. We had a Dean of Men and a Dean of Women. Uh, and he worked for the Dean of Men, and pretty shortly after that, uh, he hired an assistant, Merle Clay, and so Pete and Clay were our first two police officers on campus in 1925. This is about eight years uh, before the Indiana State Police was formed in 1933. Uh, Bloomington PD had already been around for a while. Monroe County Sheriff had, of course, been around for quite a while at that point. Uh, they were actually uh, special deputies, uh, special police, uh, sanctioned by the county sheriff, which we'll talk more about uh, in a little bit. So then in 1932, James J. Robinson, who was a law school faculty member, uh, who actually have a whole nother uh, video about because he did a lot of amazing stuff as a war crimes prosecutor and a Supreme Court justice in Libya. Uh, it, but anyway, he started, uh, uh, he came to campus and started doing work about studying crime and crime behaviors. 1935, he helped found the Institute of Criminal Law and Criminology which was the first uh, police training program at a state institution that had a four-year program. So it was the first sort of college, uh, state college that was doing law enforcement training uh, as a part of the institution. So I mentioned that the Indiana State Police was founded in 1933. They were founded with, I think, 16 or 18 officers. Uh, it wasn't very big. Uh, but through the 1930s, particularly as motor vehicle crimes were becoming bigger and bigger, they needed more and more officers. And so they were needing a faster training program for larger groups of folks. So in 1938, the Indiana State Police uh, ran their first summer police school here at IU. Uh, and for just reference on the numbers, they had 1,500 applications. They brought 250 people to campus for testing. They admitted 90 to this police school, of which 48 were graduated and selected. So you wound up with really about uh, 42 other graduates of the school that could then be hired by other law enforcement agencies because they'd already been through the state police school. So they already had some form of credentialing by going through this. Uh, this is long before there were police academies. This is long before there were uh, pre-service training programs. I mean, this is all part of a, a, a burgeoning market of how do we train law enforcement officers uniformly and not just through on-the-job training. So in 1949, after World War II, there's a, a surge in interest in law enforcement training. Uh, and so Don Kukin, who was the guy in the dark uniform in the previous photo, uh, he was an uh, instructor with the Indiana State Police, was hired as faculty member to head the new Department of Police Administration, which was a full academic department that was dedicated to degrees in police administration. Uh, the Institute for Criminal Law and Crimin uh, Criminology became the Security Training Institute, which was a part of that uh, uh, department. It was led by Robert Borkenstein. Uh, and so this is interesting because so Robert Borkenstein uh, was is best known as the guy who invented the breathalyzer. But prior to inventing the breathalyzer, when he was still with the Indiana State Police, he had actually worked with Dr. Rolla Harger, who was an IU Medical School faculty member, to invent something called the Drunkometer. Uh, and so he had done that while he was uh, in partnership with him. Then he invented the breathalyzer himself. Uh, and then later on, uh, well, around that time, other people were trying to compete, trying to compete develop competing systems or better systems, the intoximeter uh, was developed as well uh, by Glenn Forrester. And so this is actually a photo of them from a conference on campus. 
uh, all sitting around talking about their uh, different alcohol gauging uh, materials that, or tests that they had invented. Uh, so, you know, this is a real sort of cutting edge of criminal justice and forensics that's sort of happening at this time uh, on campus through both the Security Training Institute and the Department of Police Administration. So by the mid-1950s, uh, Borkenstein becomes chair of the Department of Police Administration. Uh, the Security Training Institute becomes the IU Center for Police Training. They're still doing all the Indiana State Police training programs. They're doing in-service training for other law enforcement officers and agencies. They're offering uh, pre-service training. So for people that want to go into law enforcement but maybe don't have a, a degree or any academic training, they're doing trainings for them. Uh, and they're doing a lot of law enforcement training for a lot of the agencies in the state at this point. And if you're looking for a more symbolic connection uh, between the IU police and Indiana State Police, uh, the red patch on the left was the initial Indiana University Police Department patch. Uh, and you can see how similar it is to the Indiana State Police patch. There are also some other legacies of this program that are still around campus. Uh, if you've ever been out towards 10th and the Bypass on the backside of where the hospital is, you've probably run across Range Road, uh, which now connects to Discovery Parkway. That's called Range Road because we actually used to have a range out there uh, where law enforcement officers from around the state came to do their training. Uh, and it was a part of our various training programs that we were doing here. The late 1960s were a major period of law enforcement and security reform around the country. Uh, everybody was looking at different law enforcement and government agencies and what their roles were, what they needed to be, what they should be, what they shouldn't be, all of these pieces. IU was no exception. And interestingly enough, uh, there's a number of, of documented reports and things from the period of faculty and students who were calling for better pay for the officers so they could attract a wider variety of officers. They wanted better educated and better trained officers. At that point, the average education level uh, of a police officer on the IU campus was like 11th grade. Um, so they weren't even necessarily high school graduates, uh, which back then there weren't a lot of college graduates. I mean, college graduates were still a fairly small number of the population. Uh, they wanted younger officers who better connected with the students and they wanted more diversity amongst the officers. Um, so these were all things that the, the faculty and students were, were asking for from the administration. So in 1968, we get a new university president, Joseph Sutton. Uh, Sutton happens to be friends with uh, an FBI agent uh, named uh, Irvin Owen. His nickname was Skeeter, so Irvin Skeeter Owen. Uh, and he asked Skeeter to advise him privately, personally, confidentially, on what could be done to sort of meet these requests of faculty and uh, students to reform uh, or change campus law enforcement. And the first thing that, that Skeeter said is, you've got to lobby the state to have the authority for your own police department. Uh, right now, all your officers are uh, basically deputy sheriffs. They are given their authority by the county sheriff, uh, and therefore you're having to go with their decisions about who qualifies to be an officer and, and who doesn't. Um, so, you know, first off, we need authority to have our own police department so we can write our own policies and procedures and do our own rules. Uh, we also have all these campus resources. We have this criminal justice program, this police training institute. We have these things that we can use to train our officers uh, to make them sort of meet these standards in modern policing uh, that the, the students and faculty are asking for. Uh, and then his third idea was we could create our own academy to send our officers through, to train our officers, and students could do it. Now, keep in mind back then, to be a police officer, you didn't have to have any college. You didn't have to have uh, uh, any formal training. There, there weren't police academies like we think of them today. You very often just got on-the-job training. Uh, and most places, you only had to be 19 years old. Uh, so you were getting a lot of folks straight out of high school that were coming onto the college campus to be police officers, uh, but we were also had a lot of older officers that didn't have training. Uh, so the idea was if we could combine all of these things, uh, have our own police department, have better campus resources, use our campus resources for training folks, and establish our own academy, we can meet these goals that the faculty and the students are asking for. 
So in 1971, uh, the university got its first police department or its first official police department, IUPD, uh, was formed. Uh, and along with that, the IU Police Academy was created through some grant funding uh, that the university got to train students uh, as part of the academy. They created a cadet program uh, that was initially going to be a, a multi-year program where the cadets could then come through and be certified as police officers by going through a police academy over the summer. And then they would work as part-time officers uh, for the rest of their time in school. And then when they graduated, they could either become IUPD officers if we had job openings, or they could go to other institutions or other law enforcement places around the state. Now, at the point that uh, uh, the academy was created and that our police department was created, we had just hired our first black police officer in 1970. Uh, so it was able to draw in more diversity, is able to draw in women for the first time. Uh, women police officers were still kind of a new concept in the world of law enforcement. We did a great big academic study before starting the academy over the roles of women and what, all the way down to what should women wear when they're on duty, uh, all of these sort of questions. And we studied all the major police departments around the country that had female officers at that point in order to figure out what would be the best options for doing this. So the goal was, again, to meet that uh, request of faculty and students for a younger and more diverse police force. And so in 1972, we graduated that first police academy, uh, that first class of uh, students that had been trained to also be police officers. Uh, this is their graduation photo, and it started a tradition through this day that they still take that same graduation photo with each class uh, as we just graduated our 50th class. There were some challenges uh, early on to this, but not necessarily policy or academic challenges. They were mostly financial challenges. Uh, running a police academy costs money. Uh, you have to bring in officers, you have to bring in trainers. Training costs money uh, for all the equipment and materials that you need and everything else. Uh, so we had a, a crisis when the grant ran out. Uh, the grant actually got cut short by some changes that were happening at the state and federal level. Uh, and there was a concern about the program. And so the program actually got shrunk down to being one year of being a cadet uh, and then one year of being a part-time officer. Uh, with the option of possibly having a few second year part-time officers. So this sort of forced it into being a sophomore, junior, senior level program. Uh, whereas in the old program, you often had freshmen that were interested that could uh, get through the cadet program rather quickly uh, and become officers by their sophomore or even junior year. That wasn't really happening as much after this point uh, in 1973, 74, when we had to, to make these changes. So highlighting just a few other pieces of the program that make it kind of an interesting piece of IU history. Uh, so as I said, we just graduated our 50th class. We now have over 1,400 graduates of this program. Uh, the, it's the only program in the country that is for full-time college students to simultaneously earn that degree uh, and become certified as police officers. Um, so it kind of puts it in a unique place. There are other colleges that host police academies, but very often they are for agencies and officers from around the state to come there, do the training, and then move on. They're not also uh, students. It's not designed for them to also be students at that university. Uh, so this puts us in kind of a unique place uh, for doing this nationally. We get a lot of questions about where did it come from and how did this program get set up? and it's so unique and how does it work? Uh, so hopefully this video has answered some of those questions for folks. So there'll be a link to subscribe uh, here on the page. Uh, if you wanna learn more about IU history, subscribe to our Golden Book YouTube channel. Uh, I'll also pop up a couple other videos here that may be of interest to you.